with uh, ladies' prayer bre and breakfast. <clears throat> it's going to be April the 20th, 8.30 a.m. See my wife for details. Uh, Y'all going to have a great time meeting up here for prayer and then going to Log Cabin Inn for the breakfast. It is good. I am jealous. I may have to tag along and hide somewhere else in the building when it's time for that because I do love me some Log Cabin Inn. Um, it is gonna y'all gonna have a great time with uh, fellowship and prayer together, and uh, I encourage you again. That's April twentieth. Uh, see my wife for details there. But other than that, I'm excited what God is doing around the lighthouse. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we don't always see right in the forefront. Because sometimes, honestly, I forget to say what what I remember to when I'm asked to announce. Because I'm human and I get real forgetful. I'm, I'm getting old, so I'm getting old, real old now. Uh, <laughs> after yesterday. Felt like I got hit by a freight train this morning when I woke up. Uh, it wasn't so good. I'm like, this hit me too hard. But I, I, I'm feeling uh, forgetful in my, my older age. But you know what? We got a lot going on. That just means we got a lot to get excited about. Sometimes the greatest thing about forgetting something is it can surprise you again and get you all excited all over again. Amen. How many ever put some money in your wallet and you forgot about it? And then you go find it later on. And you're like, ooh, an extra 20. Where'd that come from? Amen. You know, we got great gifts that Jesus has set before us that sometimes we forget about and we get distracted about, and then we get reminded again. And that's what I'm so thankful about the Word of God. It reminds us of the wonderful gifts that God has for us and the things that God has for us, the promises that are in the Word for us that we just, if we do our part, He's going to do His part. As it gets darker out there, just remember, we can read the back of the book. He wins. I just want to be on His side. Amen. And I'm thankful we're going to learn about being on his side from the man of God today. He's going to bring us the word of God. Say, God bless. Pastor D. Now. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. Hold on, stop. You ain't going nowhere. Hang for a second. Amen. Get right here. I'm going to thoroughly embarrass you today. It's my job. I get to thoroughly embarrass folks on general occasion. Amen. Brother Travis had a birthday yesterday. And you know, I'm not going to say he turned 40, because he didn't. But he did turn more than 40, which I will say. Amen. But uh, we appreciate Brother Travis around here, even all he does at the Lighthouse. And I want to just take a moment here to uh, wish him a happy birthday the only way the Lighthouse knows how. Amen. Y'all ready to help me? Hmm? Okay. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. Have the best year that you've ever had in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday, Brother Travis. Amen. And we almost missed Brother Chris here. He, we, about a week or two ago, I guess it was his birthday. And I, is that about right? Was it a week or two? About a, yeah, yeah. So I knew it was about a week or two ago, but we got him just before he got out the door on us. Amen. Sometimes they try to sneak him in. Amen. So we miss him. Amen. And, I, and we can't thoroughly embarrass him. Amen. That's part of our job. Amen. To embarrass you. No, I'm just kidding. I uh, appreciate these men of God and all the things they do for the kingdom of God because. Ultimately, God is the one that's watching. You see, the bottom line is, folks, you know, we men have a tendency to fail and fall short a lot. I mean, we're not perfect. We, uh, we certainly have good days and we have bad days and we uh, are not perfect all the time that we like to be. We're just not. And um, fortunately, we have a God who is perfect and who can perfect us along the way. And I'm glad for that. Amen. I certainly am glad for that. I have, I've had my days, amen, of not being perfect, as I like to say. Amen. And so uh, uh, I'm just glad I have a high priest. I have an advocate, the Bible says. Amen. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. I can fall on my face before him and say, Lord, I, you know what? I haven't had the best day here. Amen. I've, I have found myself getting angry. I found myself, amen, doing something I probably shouldn't have been doing. Amen. But uh uh, and so uh, the Bible says all you have to do, amen, is once you've repented of your sins, you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and amen, and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you've identified with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
Amen. According to Peter in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when he asked the question, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for this promise unto you and to your children, to those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God should call. And what I like the most, and the scripture goes on to say a little bit further than that. Amen. As it goes down just a few more verses, it says, And they that gladly received his word. Amen. We're baptized that day. Amen. And they were added to the church that day about 3,000 souls. So that wasn't what it matter what your shingle is on the door. The Bible's very clear. Amen. That was added to the church that day. Whatever Peter preached was the right message. Not to mention Jesus had given him the keys to the kingdom. Amen. And so uh, it's not my message today. I'm just talking. Amen. But uh, I want you to know, amen, it's important. But the Bible says that all we got to do is come back to the altar again once we have been part of his covenant plan. Amen. We've come back to the altar again and asked forgiveness. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Anybody in here perfect? Let me see your angel's wings. Let me check on you. No? I don't see any. I'm looking hard. Nope. Y'all ain't there yet either, I take it. Amen. But I, I, it is a privilege for me today to, uh, to welcome Robert here today. Amen. I have had uh, Robert said he was going to come. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and I 90% believed him, but there's always that 10%. Amen. Amen. Praise God, because I, you know how many folks you ask, and they say, yeah, I'm coming, and they just don't quite make it through the door. But Robert, thank you for being here today. Man, we, what a privilege it is for us to have you with us here today. We certainly appreciate you being here today. It uh, means a lot to us, amen, and uh, hopefully we haven't let you down today, amen, because uh, the Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. I hope everybody has availed themselves to shake your hand at least or to come before you, because what's the Bible say? Moses said he was a stranger in a strange land. Amen. And when you feel like a stranger, the worst thing to do is alienate somebody when you feel like you're a stranger. Amen. Hebrew customs of hospitality was you get off your duff and you go say hello. Amen. I don't care what you got going on. It ain't going to hurt you to get up and say hello to somebody. Praise God. And so man, that's one of the things we're, I, I believe that we like to do around the lighthouse, at least make somebody feel comfortable and welcome. Amen. And Robert, welcome here today. Amen. But let's get into the word of the Lord today. Amen. We're missing several today. Amen. But that's all right because God has got a plan. Amen. How many of y'all know that's why we live stream services in case some folks have missed can watch it later on. Amen. Praise God. And if you have your Bibles, please turn me to the book of Leviticus, chapter 6. You mean that old boring stuff, Brother D? Yeah, that old boring stuff. Amen. That's that book you look at and go, why am I reading this? I'm going to tell you why you're reading it shortly. It's important to know that the word of God, amen, is important in all directions. Everything we read, amen. How many know what the Old Testament points to? Anybody? Points to Calvary. Everything points to Calvary in the Old Testament. Every story you read, everything that you're looking at points to Calvary. How Jonah was swallowed by a great fish, it points to Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Come on. There's all kind of stories that you read in the Bible. They're true stories, amen. But the fact of the matter is, is that they point to Jesus in the Old Testament. And everything in the New Testament points back to Jesus. So you ever want to know how to interpret Scripture? Look at it through the light and through the lens of Jesus Christ, period. That's how you'll know. How does this interpret Jesus in my life? And you'll find your answer. Leviticus chapter 6 Verse 9 through 11, Brother Travis, when you get a chance, please put that up there. Amen, and I'll have. All right. Command Aaron and his son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. Man, God, it sounds boring already. Come on, you know when you're doing your Bible reading, you hit this stuff, you're like zipping right through it. You're not even reading it sometimes. Man, oh man. But it has, if you'll slow down a minute, it has a purpose. It is the burnt offering because of the burnt of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen breeches and he shall put, uh, that he puts upon his flesh. And take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. Amen. 
and he shall put off his garments and put on the other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp. Here we go, unto a clean place. To a clean place. Genesis 3.19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return into the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art. And unto dust shalt thou return. Brother Travis, I will just tell you, you might want to put this scripture on for later, not right now, but just a little bit later. Amen. Praise God. We're going to put on there uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. Amen. And I'll also be probably reading uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15, uh, just so you know. You can put them up. Don't put them up now. Just put them up later, and then when I get to them, I'm not going to stop. But uh, amen. I want to preach for just a little bit today when God collects the ashes, when God collects the ashes. Let's all bow our heads in a word of prayer and ask God to help us here today. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name that's above every name. Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask now for your divine power, authority, and grace to touch us in this house today. Lord, let the Holy Ghost minister to every heart and life and soul here today. Lord, let it touch somebody here today through the power, amen, of the word of God, of God, and by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we ask now, Lord God, for divine will, divine direction, Lord God, and divine authority in the Holy Ghost right now. Touch these lips of clay here today and help me to preach what thus saith the Lord today. In Jesus' name to pray, we pray. Amen. You know, before we get started here today, I'm going to have a song today. Amen. We're going to sing a little song today, a little chorus today. Amen. We'll sing a little chorus, and y'all know the song. Amen. It goes, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, where's my hands at? I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. Come on. I'm going to let it shine. Let me help you if you don't know how. This Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord right now. Amen. Praise God. See, I've learned before I ever preach anything, amen, if I feel like the spirit of a dead man's moving through here, I can't have that. Come on, he's a living God. Amen. Sometimes we get in them seats, man, and we just get plastered into them, and we're ready to sit back, put our feet up, and come on, this is the house of God. That's not what we do here. Amen. we got to be ready to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. And I just, uh, amen, I, I just, I've learned not to preach just to be preaching. Amen. Something's got to be within your heart. He meant to receive it. I mean, we have to prepare the soil to receive the word of the Lord sometimes. And I, I, there, is a, there is an instinctive even thing that happens to human beings sometimes. Sometimes we just get complacent. Amen. Whether you mean to be or not, beside the point. But you realize your praise and your worship builds a hedge around the preaching of the word. Amen. It's so vital that we praise and we worship God. Amen. Listen, I've been down to jail many times, man. I'm telling you, man, we've had that place rocking. We never had a guitar one down there. Amen. We just sit there and start singing and clapping our hands. Amen. The power of God begins to fall in the house. Amen. Because it comes from our desire to worship the Lord. Amen. When you worship God, great things begin to happen. Amen. It certainly does. 
men. The book of Leviticus we were reading out of earlier today, it's full of all types of offerings. And I'll be blunt, when you begin to read it, it is very boring if you don't know what you're looking at. Especially if it's a young Christian, they'll say, hey, read your Bible. And you come to the book of Leviticus and you, maybe you just got through the begats, for crying out loud. This one begat that one, that one begat this one, this one begat that one. You're thinking, dear God, what's the point of reading all the begats? There's a reason to read those too. Amen. But then you get to this book of Leviticus. This is the book of the priest, the book of the, the book of the Levites, and what their job was in the tabernacle, the thing that they were required to do. And how many of y'all know that God is an exacting God? He's not a God of happenstance. We'll just do willy-nilly about stuff. I mean, everything was meticulous with God. Everything in the tabernacle was meticulous with God. Everything that he did had purpose and had reason. Everything, even when Jesus walked this earth, every place he went had purpose and had reason. Every step he took had purpose and had reason. Amen. And when we purpose ourselves to come into the house of God, amen, there ought to be something in our hearts, amen, that says, I'm going to do my part here today. Amen. I'm going to, amen, it's more than just a meticulous thing that we do here today. There's so much more here today. And I know it's a very meticulous book. You begin to read in this book, and it talks about all the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and the peace offerings and the sin offerings and the, and the guilt offerings and animals that are sacrificed like lambs and goats and bulls and doves. And it's like, what's the point of all this stuff? My goodness, because it all points to Jesus Christ. Amen. It all begins to point to some other facet of his ministry. It all begins to point to something else about him because really we're not celebrating us here today. We're celebrating him here today. It's him that we're here to glorify and magnify and lift up and exalt. This is his house, amen, that he said we shall be called a house of prayer. This ought to be the place, amen, where we worship and magnify and give him all the glory and the honor and the praise. For there is none above him, for he is great and greatly to be praised. It says of him that the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. That he meted out the heavens with a span by the work of the fingers he created the stars also. So that ought to tell you how big he is. Man, as I begin to read about these burnt offerings and great offerings and peace offerings and sin offerings, they all point to you and what you're supposed to be doing. Because you are a minister of Christ. Whether you know it or not, well, you say, well, I don't preach message. Yes, you do, because you're the only Bible some people will ever read. Your actions, how you do things, what you do, amen, determines how people view Christ. Because they have to see it in you. Amen. That's why when you read the book of Leviticus, you're looking at you and the job you're doing. You're looking at the job that you're supposed to be doing. That's why we're reading this book here today. Amen. To let you know, amen, that it's a very orderly and a very specific book. Amen. The ashes, amen, God was very specific about what he wanted done with those ashes for all of those sacrifices that were put upon that altar, that brass altar, that giant brass altar, amen, all the sacrifices that were placed upon it, amen, all the doves, amen, all of the lambs, all the goats, and all the bulls, and all the different things, amen, depending on what day it was, and what the sacrifice was for, amen, all the grain offerings, all the meal off, all the different offerings that went on that thing, amen, God had a specific purpose, amen, for that, amen, he was so specific about he wanted them, what the, he wanted done with them, because he said, let's put these ashes in a clean place. Only God would look to put ashes in a clean place. All due respect, uh, we have a fireplace in our house. And we actually used it this year. And you know what I did with the ashes? I dumped them out somewhere. I didn't put them in a nice clean box anywhere and hold them up for a while. I just took them out and put them outside and just threw them out, you know. I just put a willy-nilly, as I like to say, out in the, in the backyard somewhere, amen, and just kind of let it hit the soil, hoping I might actually be able to grow a tomato plant this year. Amen. And so, but there are ashes, amen, that's in our own lives. Amen. We, amen, we, we, you know, when you burn that wood and you just throw it into a garbage can, amen, or you, amen, once the wood is used up and we don't collect the ashes and we don't store them, unless maybe some of you all do, maybe some of you store them in a big ash can and, Maybe you use it for a specific purpose, but most of us don't. Most of us don't look twice and think about doing any of that kind of stuff, amen? God made sure the ashes were put, though, in a clean place. The ashes meant something to God. 
Amen. Ashes matter to God. You see, insignificant stuff matters to God. You might find it insignificant in your life, but it matters to God. Everything mattered to God. The sacrifice, amen, who was given the sacrifice. What was done when the sacrifice was finished, it all mattered to God. You see, when God views you, amen, he sees your sacrifice, amen. The work for God that you have done over the years, amen. Every day, amen, you're being burned up doing the will of God in your life. You Remember what he said, amen, to, amen, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, Amen, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for that is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind in the Holy Ghost today. I want you to understand that God said you are a living sacrifice, amen, among all men. The work for God that you have done, amen, everything that you have done, God sees everything that you have done, amen. You may not have the strength that you did when you were 20 years old. <laughs> Excuse me. You might not be able to do the same stuff you did when you were 20. You don't have the speed that you had or the strength you had when you were 20. And you could get out there and, man, you could just go get everything done. You could drive buses, amen. You could teach Sunday schools and you could, amen, spend time down to jail and you could do this and you could do that and you could do all kind of stuff, amen. Praise God. But now you're getting older, amen. And your body don't respond like it used to. God knows that and God sees that, amen, because God cares about the ashes, amen, all the time that you spent burning up for God or doing the things of God. I mean, I mean, he has bottled up every tear that you have shed. Amen. He has marked every offense that has come against you. Amen. He has every ridicule that may have come your way for the cause of Christ. He has counted for him. Amen. Every work for God that you have done. Every bit of worship that you have given. Amen. You might not be able to run like you used to. Amen. You might be able to dance like you used to. You may not be able to put them hands up in the air quite like you used to. You may not even be able to clap them hands as hard as you used to. I remember when Sister Michelle would get down here and she'd worship and she'd start doing back bends. I mean, the Holy Ghost would be moving her. Amen. And she's got a walker now and she can't do the back bends anymore. She can't do all that stuff anymore. But you know what she can do? Amen. She can do what she's got left. Amen. Because some of that stuff's been used up over the years. Amen. But God cares about those ashes of days gone by. Don't ever think that God has forgotten about all the time that you put in the work of God in your life. Life. Every Saturday you've come in here and cleaned. Every time that you've Every time that you've done anything for the kingdom of God, every time you prepared a Sunday school lesson, every time that you've done anything for God's kingdom, God knows exactly what you're doing. He cares about the ashes. So what's the big deal about them ashes? Amen. Every time you read your Bible, brothers are out having fun at the ball game. Every time, amen, you found a place to pray, amen, when somebody else decided to watch TV that night, amen. Every time, amen, the agonizing hours of prayer for folks that will never appreciate your prayers, never know you're even praying for them, God cares about the ashes. God cares about the ashes, amen. Every fight you've had with your child over the holiness things in this life, God cares about the ashes. Amen. God cares about every time, amen, you've studied, every time that you've learned how to play an instrument, every time that you spent the time to do it, God cares about the ashes. You know what he doesn't care about all the time? You spent complaining about stuff. Amen. All the time that you spent, <laughs> amen, fretting over things you ought not be fretting about. Amen. Let me tell you what he does care about. Amen. He cares about the ashes. The ashes are important to God. Because he sees those ashes and says, that's been the work of God. Amen. That's how their life has been spent up and how it's been used up. Amen. While others are out partying, doing nonsensical things. Amen. And trying to enjoy the trappings of this life. Amen. And amen. But you're coming to church on Sunday morning. Amen. You're making it important. Amen. Let me make God a priority in your life because he said, what he said, amen. Amen. To come and worship him in his house. Amen. He said, makes it very clear. Amen. That's important that we worship God. Amen. Amen. You might not be able to shout like you used to. Lord knows my voice ain't what it used to be. 
Lord knows there's a lot of things about me that ain't what you used to be. But you know, this old boy can still get up and move around every now and then. I may not go mock full with my hair on fire because I ain't got no hair left. Amen. But I can sure get around the building every now and then. Praise God. Amen. I've just learned over the years, amen, never stop worshiping what you got left. Amen. I don't mean you give up because you're too tired anymore. No, you still give, give God what you got left because he cares about your ashes. Why are these ashes so important? They're going to be very important in your life. You're going to find out here in a minute. The importance of having those ashes in your life. You see, that altar was brass. Amen. It's a type of repentance and dying out. Amen. It was important. Amen. Because God cared about the ashes. He just cared about the ashes. You see, God one day is going to collect those ashes. Amen. I find it so interesting. Here's how much God cared about the ashes. The altar was made of brass. Brass is a much, I don't want to use the word cheaper, more inferior metal than gold, at least as far as value and price. But the snuffer dishes in the tabernacle plan, amen, those things, praise God, that God would use, amen, the snuffer dishes and the fire pans, those are what was used to collect the ashes. They were made of pure gold. God cared more about the ashes than he did the altar. You see, that ought to tell us something. I'm thankful for repentance. Don't get me wrong, because that's what the altar is all about, repenting. Amen. But God's looking at that life that you lived. Amen. And what you're giving for God on that altar. He's looking more at what you're giving. He, it wasn't the altar that he glorified. It's the work that's done on the altar that mattered to God. You see, we glorify altars, but we don't glorify the work that's done at the altar. And that's what God is looking at. He says, I care about the ashes in your life. All the times you thought nobody was praying for you and you thought nobody cared about you, and God said, don't you know I care about everything you do? He said, no matter what it is, folks, I mean, human beings have the capacity just to forget about other folks. We have the capacity to not do it right all the time, and we're just fallible at the end of the day. Don't look to human beings to make you happy. Look to God. God, he, he doesn't forget. He remembers everything. Amen. He remembers everything. Every tear you've ever shed. He said he's going to bottle up every tear you've ever shed. Amen. He certainly is. You see, the priest, I love this part. The priest changed to a linen garment, linen garment to take out the ashes. He had to change out of his priestly clothes into the linen garment. And the linen breeches, the linen pants, if you will. That was the same thing that was used on the Day of Atonement by the high priest. The most holiest day of the year. God considered it holy to take up the ashes. He thought it was a big deal. The ceremony wasn't so big, wasn't, wasn't about the sacrifice that was on the altar. It was about the ashes. The ashes mattered to God. The ashes mattered to God. I got news flash for you. Don't try to get me to remember every little thing you've done for God because I, I can barely remember yesterday's news for crying out loud. I can barely remember the laundry list Michelle gets me before I go to the grocery store to grab some things. Amen. She'll give me about seven things on that list, and I'll remember five of them probably. The other two, I try to make anagrams out of them and all kind of stuff, and I always forget something. Did you get the cough drops? And I'll have to go back up to Walgreens in Jesus' name. I'm always forgetting something. But God doesn't forget because he cares about the ashes. He cares about you. And he cares about the work of the kingdom of God in your life. Amen. The priest would change to the linen garment to take the ashes out, amen, to a clean place. Amen. Linen garment, what was used that high priest would use on the day of atonement. Amen. It was the holiest day of the year, what the Jews call Yom Kippur. Amen. It was the, the day of the year where there was a hush and an awe, and they made sure the high priest was prepared to go for a week. A lamb had to be prepared for a whole week and, and stay at somebody's house. I mean, it was such a big deal of a day. But yet God said, I'm going to do that for your ashes. Just for your ashes. Don't ever think that you're not appreciated by God. You certainly are. Amen. Ash collecting was holy work. The holiest day of the year they changed. Amen. The Bible says, we read it, dust thou art and shall dust thou shall return. One day God is going to collect his ashes. 
Amen. Amen. He's going to ask, collect his ashes from a clean place. He certainly is. Amen. Give, let's, let, give me Isaiah 61 and 3. I'm just going to throw that up here real quick. And I, I want you to understand what he's trying to say here. Bear with me for a minute, folks. I, I'm hoping it's so quiet in here because you're just listening to me. Amen. Because I'm getting a little nervous here. I, you know, I don't like radio silence. You all know that, right? When you all worship, it helps me to preach. You know that, don't you? That's what the Bible talks about. I won't get into that here today. To point unto them in Zion, amen, to give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He said, I'm going to give you beauty for those ashes. And I thought to myself, Lord, how are you going to give us beauty for the ashes? I don't know. When I got to work in my fireplace, I grab the ashes, I get all dirtied up. I don't get prettier. Lord knows. Don't answer that, Sister Michelle. Amen. What is the beauty? Amen. You see, the, here's the thing about ashes. The broom is only so big for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're, they're doing sacrifices, daily sacrifices, yearly sacrifices, evening sacrifices, morning sacrifices. Sacrifices for the person, sacrifices for the family, sacrifices for the nation. They're doing sacrifice upon sacrifice. They had just had a clean room for it. But you know what begins to happen to ashes over time? They start building up. Just like anything else, how are we going to make more room with ashes? Well, you're going to have to compact them down to make some room. You know, I found this really neat. You know what I found out? I found out when the Mount St. Helens erupted back in 19, I guess it's 1980 something by now, 1970, 1981, whatever it was, somewhere around there. Amen. They thought that for years, coal, amen, could only be made after it spent thousands upon thousands of years under pressure under rock. And they found out that, amen, that trees under pressure from this lava flow, amen, were able to make coal at the very bottom of Spirit Lake, the whole, whole, bottom of Spirit Lake was filled with coal from those trees that had fallen into the lake, amen, and from the pressure, amen, it was caused by just the water pressure. Well, what they found out is it didn't take thousands of years to make coal. It just took one good eruption, one good eruption to make the coal. You know, here's the thing. Some of you, God's looking for an eruption out of you. Come on, sometimes we get so complacent. Amen. God's just looking for us, amen, to have a little breakthrough in our lives, amen, uh, to worship him like we know how to worship him. Not when you get to conference, but do it at your own church. Come on. Oh, we were down conference. It amazes me how some, I've seen some folks, man, they get all kind of fired up down conference. Amen. You get them down there like, you know, but when it's just preacher on Sunday. Get them down to conference, all of a sudden it's, woo, thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. I can only get happy once a year. When you can have it in your own church, whatever you want to, it's just you got to have the want to. Amen. And every now and then, God just looking for a little Vesuvius eruption out of you. I remember when God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was up there doing my daily. Amen. I was like, I call it my daily sacrifice. Every day I go up that altar and pray for it. Amen. And every day I didn't get it. Every day I get up there. Lord, bless me. Lord, you know, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, and I couldn't get the Holy Ghost for nothing. All these other folks get the Holy Ghost. I couldn't get the Holy Ghost. I thought, what's wrong with me, Lord? Is there something wrong with me? Is there anything? Well, what's wrong with me? Amen. And I remember a preacher listening to my ear one day, and he said, listen, why don't you just listen for the voice of the Lord right now? Come on. Start listening to God. And whatever you feel like God's telling you to do, just do it. I said, what do you mean just do it? This ain't a Nike commercial. just began to lift my hands. My wife, same way, she hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost either. She just, you know, just stand down at altars with your hands lifted up and got 1,800 people praying for us, smacking their heads, going, give us the business. And you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You know how we can get. Amen. And they're just, you know, shaking heads back and forth. Arms are flowing and the whole deal. Everybody else getting the Holy Ghost all around us but us. So we're hands up like that, you know, and I, and I found that, I felt like the Lord just says, you know, because I was too cool for all that jumping stuff. You know what I'm talking about. 
I don't chant. I'm too cool. Said, you can't look like me. I'm just too cool for that. And so I got down there, man, and, I, and I'm like, okay, I can clap my hands. I can deal with that. I'd sing a song or two with you. You know, I'd sing a little bit with you. But, man, don't, don't ask me to do all that jumping stuff and all that crazy Pentecostal stuff. You know, we all start swinging some chandeliers and bouncing off the walls like you at WWE or something and all kind of craziness and nonsense. And, hey, man, and I don't do that stuff. I thought, what's wrong? You know, I like what I feel in here. I like all that stuff, but I don't, I'm not so sure I'm with all that. And the next thing I know, the Lord began to speak to my heart. Just jump. One time. Just jump, sister. He said, just jump. I kid you not. It's amazing what obedience will do for you. I went, oh, my, I feel like going, Holy Ghost, boom, come pouring in on me. I'm speaking in other tongues. The Spirit of God give it the other. It's my wife. At the very same time, I got the Holy Ghost. She gets the Holy Ghost. We're both. Like an EF5 tornado. I mean, it was power of God began to move in such a mighty way because I was willing to have a little eruption. Amen. And it wasn't anything I'd done. I just finally got obedient and stopped letting my pride get in the way of what God was trying to do in me. Folks, and, I, I, and listen, that's it's not a moniker to anyone. I, I just, this was just me. This is what was, this is what was holding me back. Who knows what holds you back? Amen. Nobody knows. I mean, that's between you and God. That's the thing. Church can't do that for you. Amen. You can repent of your sins like you're supposed to. You do that work. Amen. Church can baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of your sins. It's the church's job. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that's God's job in you. Amen. That's where you get connected to the altar. You get connected to your church. Then you get connected to God. Amen. It's just like he wanted it to be. Praise God. But it don't come from sin in your life. Amen. You've got to repent first. Praise God. But 1 Corinthians makes it very clear. Amen. So the ashes, they get compacted. Guess what I found out? Y'all probably knew this from school because y'all smart. You compact something hard enough, especially coal and ashes and different things, guess what you get? Look at you go, Aiden. You're so stinking smart. It drives me crazy sometimes. Get diamonds. In other words, when God has to make room, he starts making diamonds. He starts making jewels. Amen. He starts making pearls, and well, not pearls per se, I suppose, but rubies, amen, and all the stuff that comes out of the ground, amen, that comes through pressure. You see, all those ashes that you've got, amen, you're just shining like a diamond before God. You're just shining like ways you never thought you could shine. And that's what God sees. Because remember, he said one day he was going to make up his jewels. You know what he said? I'm going to take up my jewels with you. I'm going to take my treasure. Why do you think he called you a peculiar treasure? He said, I'm going to call you a peculiar priesthood, he said. Peculiar is an Egyptian word. Describe the Egyptian's treasure. You're a peculiar treasure unto God. You may look at me and you go, well, I ain't no diamond. Look at me. I'm 200 none of your business. That's not what God sees. Let me tell you what God sees. God sees all the times, amen, that you spent worshiping. He sees all the times, amen, that you put out, put yourself out, amen, for others. He sees all the times, amen, that you spent and you made yourself get up on Sunday morning and come to church. He, mm, I, I'll tell you, I wish, I wish somebody helped me right now. I want you to understand what God sees in you, amen, to try to motivate you, to help you understand that God cares about the ashes that you put in this thing. God cares about every time that you've done something here today that you don't think you might not be appreciated. Trust me, if men don't appreciate you, God appreciates Appreciate you. You understand that? Amen today. Amen. Because it doesn't matter what men think. It matters what God thinks. Amen. And God is looking, amen, to make up some jewels someday. Amen. He's looking for all of those that put their time in. You know how many people come to me and say, oh, Brother D, I, I wish I was 25 again. I wish I could do this for you still. I wish I could. I know what you wish you could do, but you can't do that anymore, and I get it. But let me tell you what you can do. You can still give me your all at your seat. Amen. You can still give me your all, amen, by making it to church. You can still give me your all, amen because you're not giving it to me, you're giving it to, unto the Lord, amen, and that's what you need to understand here today, it's not about what you can't do, it's what you still can do, amen, that God is seeing here today, because God cares about those ashes, amen, praise God, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15, 11 through 15, Brother Travis, 
Amen. The Bible makes it clear when you get that foundation of Jesus Christ, when you get water baptized in his name, amen, because there's no other foundation can be laid, amen, but the name of Jesus Christ is, is the foundation that God brings for us today. Amen. He said, for the other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, here we go. Gold, silver, and precious stones. Or you could put wood, hay, and stubble on it. You know what wood, hay, and stubble is? That's stuff that ain't used up. That's exactly what it is. It's when you know you could have came to church and decided not to. It's, well, don't get ugly, Brother D. Well, if I ain't preaching, I got to do something. Amen. It's when you just gave up. You just quit in your heart. So I just don't want to. That's okay. Get right back on the altar and burn it back up again. That's the great thing, amen. We, we have the opportunity to burn it back up again. We have the opportunity, amen, to, to put that thing back on the altar again. Amen. You don't have a gravestone over your head yet, amen. Uh, you've got the opportunity to put it back on that altar again. Say, Lord, uh, use me up some more, Lord God. Use me up some more, amen, because every man's work shall be made manifest, amen, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be, amen, revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work uh, of what it is. If any man's work uh, by which he had burnt thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Amen. In other words, if any man's work shall be burned, he, he shall also suffer loss, for he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. In other words, whatever you put on that altar, hey, if it'll stand the test of God's fire, amen, it'll last. Uh, you put some precious stones on that thing, uh, I guarantee you it's going to last. You put some gold and some silver, it's going to last. Uh, it'll be purified. It might be liquefied, but it'll be purified. Amen. And it will last. Uh, but the wood, the hay, and the stubble, amen, it will not last. You'll be saved, amen, but at the end of the day. Your works, amen, your works will be burned up. Every time you've ever given to church, it matters to God. Every time that you've ever done anything, it matters to God. Here's the thing. You may not think you're doing anything for God, but you are. When you speak to that coworker, when you talk to somebody on the phone and just help them out a little bit for the day, God sees that. Because people matter to God. People matter to God. They need to matter to you. Because if it matters to God, it needs to matter to me. We have to avail ourselves and make ourselves available for God to do a mighty work. Because one day, one day, come on, one day he's going to make up his jewels. One day he's going to look down, amen, he's going to go to his clean place, amen, he's going to go to that holy place, amen, he's going to go to that place, amen, where he's put those ashes, and those ashes are no longer ashes, amen, those ashes have been turned into gold, and to silver, and to precious stones, and some pretty look, good looking diamonds to boot, amen, and one day he's going to make up his jewels, because God cares about the ashes, anybody want to go read the book of Leviticus now? I won't try to tell you all something here, but God cares about every little thing you do. God cares about how you raise your children. He cares about every little thing you do. God cares about every situation that's going on in your life. See, God remembers everything. He's not like me. I forget stuff all the time. God remembers everything. What's the book say? A book of remembrance was written for those that spake often of him. So if your conversation's about Led Zeppelin and not about Jesus, you might want to change your conversation. If your conversation's about the next gossip session you can get in, you might want to change your conversation. If your conversation, listen, let your conversation be about Jesus Christ and him crucified. I can assure you, amen, one day God's going to make up his jewels. He's going to do a take up of his ashes. I want to be part of that, don't you? Why don't you all stand with me? Come on. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel God's divine presence in this place right now. I feel his divine unction right now in this house. Amen. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you today a little bit. Amen. I know Sister Tiffany can't play or sing today. Her folks are giving her tips again. And, and I heard her Wednesday night. Amen. Going to Mickey Mouse treatment again. But uh, 
again. So, uh, so I'm going to sing a little bit, but I want to open these altars right now. If any would like to come and become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for that is your reasonable service, he says. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How do you think you get transformed? You go from ashes to glory. about you, man. I'm telling you what. Mm. I'm going to open up these altars right now. We'd like to come and pray together. Come on, we'll pray with you as we men seek God's face and then just call upon the Lord for just a few moments of time here today. Ask God to help us. Ask God to do even more for us today than we did yesterday. Ask God, amen, to do a, do a work in our lives here today. Come on. Praise God. Come on. Let's just find a place to pray. Amen. And seek his face, shall we? Amen. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Yes, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done done. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Yes, thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord. I give you thanks, anointing fall on me, anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me, anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall on me, anointing. Fall on me, anointing, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing, fall on me, anointing, fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Oh, let the power of the Holy Ghost 
follow me, anointing, follow me, anointing, follow me, anointing, follow me. Oh, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall.